going on, everybody? UCI Jaguar back with GenJag.com, and we have some breaking Jaguar news, and that is that quarterback Blake Bortles, according to Adam Schefter, has been given a three-year, $54 million contact extension with $26.5 million of that guaranteed. So, huge news involving the Jaguars. You know, one of the biggest topics of this whole offseason are what are we going to be doing at quarterback? You know, there's really the whole Kirk Cousins versus Blake Bortles debate is over. Kirk Cousins will not be a Jaguar. And let's go ahead and discuss this contract extension. It's a foot race. Robinson and Browner. And it's Robinson who wins it. Touchdown Jacksonville. His 14th Looking deep for Robinson. Now I've got to say I really do like this deal. I mean, as a lot of you guys that watch my videos know, I am a supporter of Blake Bortles and I was in favor of bringing him in versus paying a boatload of money for a guy like Kirk Cousins or bringing in maybe somebody like Sam Bradford that's kind of injury prone. And, you know, I just wanted to bring Blake Bortles back because I thought he finished off the year extremely strong. He really elevated his play in the playoffs and He's a young dude. You know, he's 25 years old. I think that he is still improving. And I do like the deal that was given to him. It wasn't like a five, six year kind of thing where you're going to be, you know, have him on a team for this long, paying him this amount of money. This is almost like a prove it deal. Now, you could say that, hey, he had that one year kind of option. That was more of his prove it deal. But here's the thing if he goes out there and just really steps up his play from last year and all of a sudden he looks like you know he brings up into a you know higher tier quarterbacks so then all of a sudden he would become a really premier uh free agent in the offseason then you're gonna have to pay him a lot of money but you know this is the kind of deal where uh you know you have him locked down for three years uh 54 million dollars if he doesn't perform well next year you can still you know cut him and it's not going to uh really cost as much against the cap as you know say a big old contract uh, would entail and this does still leave room to be able to like draft a quarterback you know like what if uh you know say the head coach is like Lamar Jackson or if they like Mesa Rudolph you know if they're there at that you know first round pick then you know they can still probably get them and then still like develop them under Blake Bortles and you know they don't have to necessarily step in right away so I do like this deal um, you know what I mean? I, I still think that Blake Bortles can improve his play. I think he's still an improving player and it brings consistency to our team. You know what I mean? Like we've had, you know, Blake Bortles under what, three or four offensive coordinators in his four years here. We finally have some stability there where, okay, he's going into year two of this Nathaniel Hackett system. I think, uh, you know, the coaching staff learned from Blake Bortles and, you know, obviously they learn about, you know, all around kind of stuff and, I really think that, you know, with this offense, they can look back at what happened last year and said, okay, Blake Bortles, he was good, say, like on first down. You know, he was really good on play actions. Um, you know, he was really good when he did like this, this, and play. You know what I mean? They can look back at the tape and see what they did well and really build uh, an offense around that and, of course, build around him. You know, you're going to have to bring in some more playmakers, you know, hopefully bring back a guy like Al Robinson. Uh, you know, you're bringing in like another tight end. You know, Keelan Cole, uh, Westbrook are only getting older, but it's just, you know, last year there were games where, you know, like a Houston game, his three main receivers were three rookies, and, you know, he still did pretty well. So, uh, you know, bring in some guys around him to be able to help elevate his play and uh, just make this offense work well next year. I am happy with this move. This is exactly what I actually wanted the Jaguars to do was, um, to basically give him some kind of like three-year deal to give you some kind of cushion and you know say next year He was to ball out all of a sudden you have him You are going to be able to have him for a lot cheaper than what you would have had if he were to go out next year and have a really really good year I think one of my favorite things about this move is just to You know in the whole Kirk Cousins talk because it wasn't like the talk really annoyed me too much but what I thought it was doing it was really just Splitting the fan base into two. I mean, if you're a part of any Jaguars forums, it's like, you know, you have your Blake lovers over here and your Blake haters over here, and they're just like bashing at each other. And, you know, this kind of brings an end to all of that. And hopefully, we can move on and start having a little bit more, more civil arguments. Now, I can understand people that do not like this mood just because, you know, we've seen Blake Borles for four years and 
people have their reservations about him. People are, have their opinions, so uh, you know it's going to be hard to change that. But all I had to do is say, you know, like anything that's going to happen this off season, in Tom we trust. Tom Coughlin is smarter than me, and he's probably smarter than anybody watching this video. So Tom Coughlin, really high football IQ. You know, it'd be different if say. Tom Coughlin wasn't in office and Dave Caldwell were to offer him this extension, then it'd be like, okay, Dave Caldwell is just trying to defend his own pick. He's trying to like pay this guy all this money. You know, it's not like that. You know, we have Tom Coughlin who is actually signing off on this and uh, you know, Tom Coughlin agrees to it, you know, I'll definitely agree to it. But just with the whole Kirk Cousins thing, it's just, you know, how much of an upgrade is he? You know what I mean? Like I would say I would probably put Bortles in the top twenty quarterbacks in the NFL, and I'd probably put Kirk Cousins in the top 15 and one thing about quarterbacks is like I like to see how players start to compete how they play once they reach the playoffs because you know look at the Mannings for example like Eli Manning is a guy who is pretty bad in the regular season he throws all kinds of interceptions just doesn't you know he just doesn't look all that well but there's conversations about him being elite and the reason why that happens is because once this guy reaches the postseason, he elevates his play and he balls out. And that's why he has two Super Bowl rings. You look at Peyton Manning. He's like a regular season champion. He does really well in the regular season, but then once the playoffs come, he just did not do very well. You know, he really only has one true Super Bowl. I mean, the Super Bowl when he was on the Broncos in his final season... He basically admitted that the defense carried him there. He admitted it during the ESPYs, and, you know, he's kind of joking about it. So, uh, you know, Blake Bortles, it was encouraging to see him improve his play as the season went on. And then once the playoffs came here, uh, you know, he really elevated his play. I mean, you can look at the Bills game. Didn't do all that well in the Bills game, but you know what he did do? He used his feet, and we don't win that game if Bortles doesn't know how to, you know, take the game into his own hands and start using his feet. So... Uh, you know, really good Steelers game. Uh, played pretty well during the Patriots game, but, you know, it was a team loss. A lot of things just went against us. We team play calling, uh, you know, guys not making plays and all this different kind of stuff. So, yeah, the Jaguars signed Blake Bortles to a three-year, $54 million extension, essentially taking us out of the free agent quarterback market. But it does not take us out of the uh, draft the quarterback market. Now, I honestly think that, I don't. I honestly don't see the Jaguars drafting a quarterback first round. I just don't. That's just my gut feeling. You know, I had a gut feeling about Blake Bortles coming back, doing something like this. You know, that happened. And I believe, I don't know if I read this right. Yeah, I just checked. The Jaguars did bring Henny back as well. Exactly what I thought. I thought that if we brought Blake back, Chad Henny would be back in just because, for whatever reason, the front office likes that duo. This will be their fifth year together. You know, I, I don't... I don't really, I guess, Henny helps with mini rooms. I don't really know, but something about that combo they like. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this contract extension. Um, and, yeah, this is UCI Jaguar with GenJag.com, and I'm out. Uh, but I think to get a little bit of fam familiarity, familiarity, close yeah. with that. Yeah, I never graduated. Um, so that's good. It definitely helps out. Yeah, yeah.